What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. It is official. INEC has declared Muhammadu Buhari as the winner of the 2019 presidential election in Nigeria. Say what? <laughs> On behalf of Kolerowo, congratulations to Mr. President-elect. But who really won that election? Was it Buhari or Jubril? Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Speaking of which, Mr. President-elect, in case you're watching, this is your last opportunity to govern Nigeria. Make it count. You know, this is it. Make it count. Every day for the next four years, think about the legacy that you would want to leave behind. Do something about the hurt main killings that we've been talking about. Do something about Kaduna. Do something about Zamfara. People we are really hungry during your first tenor. Yes, but this is your second and last tenor. Five people that you know that can revive the economy and get to working. This is the time to get rid of all the cabal and work with your vice president. No more nepotism, you know, nothing like, oh, these people did not vote for me. I won't do anything for them. Mm -mm. You've been elected president of the whole country. Act like it. And all the corruption cases that were swept under the carpet during your first tenor, this is the time to dig them up and do the right thing. As for me and Kolero, we'll continue to monitor you on our plasma TV right here. Eh? We'll continue to hold you accountable now to all the other contestants especially the younger contestants please do not give up please try again in four years we need you guys hopefully though by the next election 2023 we'll have more young people not just running for president but you know running for senate for governorship because you know we have to start from the grassroots if we really want nigeria to change and uh bam yatiku ah my father you have spent money ah you spent money you articulated a lot of people i don't know why some of them did not vote for you maybe they didn't want you to sell Nigeria I mean um, NMPC in Nigeria of course it's so sad it is very very sad huge shout out to all the other candidates for graciously accepting defeat now the election itself was full of drama and hopefully we can learn something from this I mean it started with some people complaining about card readers not working the card reader is not working you can see us we cannot vote you can see the INEC officials nobody is voting INEC what is the play What's it really the play? Because I want to know. We don't come outside now, call vote the votes. When a card reader now, the Okwan go. Ah, my sister. I beg no vex. When they talk actually, actually, now actually we won't shop. You have suffered. Can you imagine? And then there were places where INEC officials did not arrive on time. In fact, one woman in Enugu arrived with her mat and pillows. <laughs> She literally laid in wait for INEC. <laughs> INEC officials were late to many pulling units. That's not supposed to be. Oh, snap. Look at this pulling unit. Ah, these people are well organized. Oh, chef and tent. Wait a minute. It is Victoria Garden City. Ah, no worry. Those ones, we call them the Abrodians. Eh? <laughs> they are from abroad. In Lekki, there was this pulling unit where they served free barbecue and drinks. I said, yes, this is how it's supposed to be. The same thing happened in Ijae, by the way. I can't wait for the time in Nigeria when election days would become like block parties. When people can celebrate each other regardless of party affiliation. Unfortunately, that was not the case at every polling unit during this election. Violence broke out in so many places. Three people were killed in Kogi state, including a 19-year-old student, Daniel Usman. Also, a Nineck official was killed in River State. And in fact, the shooting from River State was like a movie scene. As in, because of election, we are killing each other. Another boy was killed in Ibadan. And in Okota, Lagos, we could see the moment that thugs invaded the polling unit where they set the vote on fire. This country is something else. They just burnt our votes. They just burnt our votes. Voters later caught up with one of the thugs and they stoned him. Thanks, they were You know, caught up, they have stolen the vote, they scattered everything. See him lying down. They also set his motorcycle on fire. Good for him. Good for him. How much did they pay you? He was later rescued by the police. Let me know what you guys think about the fact that in many of these places where the thugs attacked, there wasn't enough police presence. In fact, like the one in Okota, there was only one police officer. Police, look at you! Look at you! Don't do anything! Only you! In another video, I could hear voters saying, where are the policemen? Why did they leave just when the thugs arrived? Look at them. Shattering ballot box and and the and the van there, the van there is from police officers. Our police must be our... They know exactly the policemen. They know 
They intentionally went to hide inside the house. Also, let me know what you think about the fact that a lot of these polling units where the thugs attacked, where there wasn't enough police officers, they were actually units where the opposition was winning. And then the thugs came and they scattered everything. <laughs> Also, some voters in Bayelsa protested that they were not allowed to vote. We are angry. Government, do something so that we can be able to settle down in our various destinations to cast our vote. Can you imagine? Also, let me know what you guys think about people taking loss into their own hands to stone one of the thugs. We have to learn from this election because people have to feel safe when they exercise their fundamental human rights. I don't think that it's fair that a lot of the polling units in opposition strongholds were the ones that didn't have enough security operatives. I don't think that's fair. Also, some evil people in Lagos said that their names had been removed from the voters register even though they registered and had their PVC so they were not allowed to vote. Majority of the non indigenous yes. the Eagles, yes. cannot find their name yes. on the voters register. Yes. Meanwhile, their candidates is showing they have they, are, they register with that polling booth through the cadre that they brought. The INEC official says they cannot vote. That's wrong. Something has to be done about that. Also, in River State, an electoral officer for Equator local government said that military personnel invaded their coalition center and they disrupted everything. The military invaded INEC office Equator at Isioko and worked out every ad hoc staff that were there to present their results to the coalition officers. She also said that they tried to force her to present a fake result. And not just that, many people didn't get to vote at all because they couldn't get their PVC. My what is your problem is, now? My problem is that I get this card from them mm -hmm. and I've been going there more than three times yes. for them to give me original card. They say I will vote with this one. Okay. And today they say I should not vote. Okay. I'm going to scatter this place. Please. Let them go me. I want to go to prison. I want to go to prison. Leave me alone. Okay, Why don't worry. shouldn't I vote? I'm with you, Jare Mama. Next time, scatter the whole place. Scatter the place. An elderly woman not allowed to vote. It is not fair. Next time, Mama, just scatter the whole place. You have my backing. But you know, on a serious note, can we find a quicker way of collating election results? What was that? Like, seriously, what was that? It's a shame that it took us five days to collect results. Habba. Each state had to read number of votes from every single party. 73 parties. Habba. And I think that was not enough. The coalition officers from Ondo were asking for a ruler. CC 77. Coalition officer, do you need additional light? I think we need a ruler. You need a ruler, not light now. Yes, a ruler will be needed. Ah, professor. Professor, no, 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 daddy, you are embarrassing me, sir. The problem of a coalition officer is not light, but ruler. Sir, if uh, you can provide both, we will assist. If I can provide both? Yes. Okay, there is a ruler. If uh, it's a ruler you need. Coalition officer, is the ruler long enough? No. Daddy, and you are a VC in Tori along. Also, I'm hoping that with this election, some of our pastors would learn a thing or two. This Nigerians one Buhari that is going beyond his boundary. That the Lord said his tenor is once, not twice. If not, he will not see the election. No. Che, did I mention any name? I have not mentioned anybody. I'm not speaking generally. I'm very sure the man was just expressing his personal opinion. He, at least he did not say that it was from God. Wait, did he? That the Lord said his tenor is once. Ah, that's why. Why eh? That's why, my father. Why now? If he made a mistake, to campaign for election before they vote he will die and i'm saying the truth i just told you the man did not die why do you keep playing nigeria your next president is a youth i see a name starting with s thus says the lord of hosts whom i will stand before on the last day to give an account anytime i prophesy to nations here you know it doesn't miss i will not say what god did not say and there's no apology for it <laughs> Sorry, man of God, in case you're watching. So it's either God lied or God did not say anything in the first place. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Please, Nigerian pastors, eh? please, like I said in my last episode, it's okay to express your opinions, but please stop painting it as a spiritual revelation. NPC will lose power in 2019. I am saying this as an oracle of the Most High God. <laughs> you know, it's true. How could you not also prophesy? 
Ah, you know, speaking of how could you know, the man will be going back to the Senate. So once again, he won the Kogi West Senatorial election. Yeah. Hunger in the land. There is poverty in the land. Let us say no to hunger by voting out President Muhammadu Buhari. That is the only way to end poverty. Tell them, Uncle you know, there is hunger in the land. I agree with him, but at the same time, there is Rolls Royce in the background. Uncle Dino was really feeling the hunger, as in for you to park a Rolls Royce in your living room. Severe hunger. Anyway, to celebrate his victory, Uncle Dino had another special number for us. <laughs> Honestly, if these people actually go there to do hard work, I don't think they will react the way they react when they win. <laughs> I'm just saying. Congratulations, Uncle Dino. You know? <laughs> At least we know that the drama will continue for another four years. It will not be boring in Nigeria. So what about Uncle Bukola? How market? We will take South East, South South. We will take North Central. With those numbers there, forget all the propaganda. The numbers will not support a Buhari victory. Did I not just warn you about fake prophecy? Ah, my uncle lost the senatorial seat to APC candidate Ibrahim Molori Ogbe. I cannot believe this. But I'm a fool. Can you believe? Ah, even but I'm a fool. Cannot believe this. But I'm a fool. Can you believe this? Honestly, Uncle Bukola, eh? in case you are watching, Uncle, I wish you thought about a day like this. I mean, you were governor for 80 years. 80 years! Not one good hospital. You kept withdrawing money from a society, General Bank, until you wiped out a whole bank. After being a governor, you've been senator for 80 years after that. No, be so hard back. Eh, better along. As a former governor, you were still getting paid full salary. You were also getting paid pension for governors. In addition to your salary as a senator, eh? You know, we were money your campaign in Kwara State. So many on third roads, especially outside of Ilorin, and you are wondering why people are calling you a thief. Uh -huh. One wedding you celebrated in Ilorin, Abuja, Lagos, and London. How bad? Oh, I'm not listening. No? Upon that, you wanted to be president. Hey, wolf. Your father was the godfather. You became the godfather. How bad? And you coin on it. I wish you thought about a day like this. You should have done well by the people of Kwara State. At least they won't call you only. Hey, so, uncle, what will you do now? Call me after the service so we can talk. Maybe you should actually practice medicine that you studied. Now, let me talk to the people of Kuala State and Lefa. I see that you've been celebrating, that you got rid of a, a godfather. We are very happy for you. Eh? <laughs> you have done well. You fought for your right. But you know, it is also equally important that you don't get yourselves under any other godfather after this or godmother. I know what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Eh? You feel me? Eh? We are very happy for you. <laughs> you have done well. Hopefully other people who have godfathers can follow Kwara State uh, example. And to the man that defeated Oga Saraki, we will be watching you on Plasma TV. That is our job. Anyway, congratulations once again to the president-elect as well as all the lawmakers, the ones returning and the new ones that were elected. Of course, we will be watching you guys on Plasma TV. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So did you hear that Ghana deported 723 Nigerians? My father and my God! Once again, Ghana is deporting you, Nigeria. <laughs> so they said that some of these Nigerians were internet scammers. They said some of them were prostitutes. And then they said some of them didn't have work permit. Why does this sound familiar? Oh, yeah, it's because at least one of them was one of the reasons Nigeria gave when we deported more than 2 million Ghanaians in 1983. We were saying that Ghanaians were taking our jobs. West Africa continues to be economic economically and politically disrupted by the mass movement of workers expelled from Nigeria. The vast number had left Ghana in search of work when Nigerian oil revenues were up and cheap labor was needed. And most Nigerians appear to support the government's decision. 
At this rally, for example, the illegal foreign workers were blamed for adding to tribal unrest, soaring crime rates in the cities, not to mention taking jobs Nigerians want now. Now it looks like the table is turning. Nigerians are the ones going to Ghana in search of greener pasture. Ghana has stable electricity. Ghanaians are now the ones deporting Nigeria for work permit. Now, I don't think that it's right for Ghana to pay us back with our coin. Charlie, I don't think it's right. Especially considering the fact that they tortured some of the deportees. Like, there was no need. But at the same time, I can't blame Ghana. If they didn't fix their country, Nigerians won't be going there in search of opportunities which is what we're supposed to do as well in Nigeria. We're supposed to fix our country. If we fix our country, this will not be happening to Nigerian citizens. Instead of that, I saw a Nigerian government official threatening to start deporting people that don't have Nigerian work permits in retaliation. And I'm like, if we fix our country, Nigerian citizens won't be treated anyhow. In fact, I don't think that it's right the way we Africans treat each other, not just the way Ghanaians are treating Nigerians or Nigerians treating Ghanaians. There are many people that are not Africans who are working illegally in Nigeria. Nigeria. I'm sure the same thing is happening in Ghana, in Kenya, in South Africa. We don't deport them more. I beg, uh, my brother, please tell them. When it is a white person in South Africa, undocumented, he's called an investor. Not only a white person, including Indians and Chinese. These Guptas didn't have proper papers. No one dead called them Quere Quere's. No one. But if it was my African brothers, we're going to be called Quere Quere's because they don't have papers. Wow, wow, that's deep. This country belongs to Africans in the same way Nigeria belongs to South Africans. Nigeria is South Africa, South Africa is Nigeria. We are Zimbabweans. We need to do away with this nonsensical idea that was imposed on, on us by colonizers, that we, we must dislike each other. We are unable to unite because we are divided along colonial lines. Francophones and Anglophones. That oof, for that, that is oof. That's the gospel truth. No, be so. I have the rest of the video on my Instagram page and on my Twitter page. Let me know what you guys think about Ghana deporting Nigerians. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Still on Ghana, by now you must have heard that the president of Ghana is trying to build a national cathedral because he said he made a vow that if he should win the election, that he would build a cathedral for God. I made a pledge to Almighty God. If he was gracious enough to grant my party, the new patriotic party and I, victory in the 2016 election, after two unsuccessful attempts, I would help build a cathedral to his glory and honor. Okay, so he also said that uh, this would unite Ghanaians and it would enhance the architecture of Ghana. So then the cathedral is expected to cost $100 million. Father, father. The much talked about National Cathedral will cost the nation $100 million to construct. What in God's name are we doing with 100 million cathedral? when we cannot afford to feed the hungry amongst us. Now, when people started shouting, <laughs> they said that churches would be the ones to raise money, aka tithe and offering. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So they said the government would only supply the land. The design is already out and it's expected to seat 5,000 people. <laughs> also have some shops and Bible museum. It will be a 5,000 seater cathedral that includes a state-of-the-art Bible museum and documentation center. The main auditorium can accommodate a congregation of 15,000 people for major national events. And of course, a lot of Ghanaians are outraged about this, especially because it wasn't long ago that they were complaining that the whole country has only 52 ambulances. So since the news of the cathedral last year, there has been a lot of pressure on the government to focus on fixing roads, providing more health facilities, spending money on education, and especially buying ambulances. And guess what? The government delivered 275 ambulances. What? That is good. At least your government is listening to something. But you know, it's still not enough. 275 ambulances plus the former 52 that they had. That means 29 million people are now sharing 327 ambulances, which means 88,000 people to one ambulance. But you know, there are some Ghanaians who love this idea and they're actually really excited. In any case, the president is going ahead with the project. Um, in fact, he was just in Washington, D.C. to do a fundraiser for the cathedral. Ladies and gentlemen, I need your help. 
I hope that the Ghanaian diaspora and all we well-meaning friends of Ghana will support us in helping to bring this transcendental project to fruition. <laughs> you can't make this up. <laughs> Anyway, as expected, some Ghanaians in D.C. protested outside of the fundraising venue. We have 52 ambulances. You come and beg him for money for cathedral. You come and beg him fucking money for cathedral. That's bullshit. So that happened a week before they delivered the ambulances. And then another thing that happened was a Ghanaian woman in Germany by the name Joyce Mensa <laughs> decided to help the government by organizing her own fundraising. I'm from Ghana and... We are building a church for Jesus Christ to come and live in Ghana because we have too much problem. We do not have enough schools for the children. We do not have enough drinking water. We do not have ambulances. So when people fall sick, they die. So we are raising $100 million in Ghana to build a church for Jesus to come and solve our problems. <laughs> Thank you, my sister. She said they want Jesus to call us. <laughs> to call us all the problem. No money. My brothers and sisters, if you are shy, just put it in an envelope. 100 euro. Okay, 50. 50 euro. <laughs> she said if you are shy, <laughs> if you are shy, put it in an envelope. <laughs> I love the fact that she highlighted some of the problems that they have in Ghana and then she said, this is the solution. My sister, please don't mind enemies of progress. You are just trying to help. <laughs> you are just trying to help. But you know the irony, so many people are abusing this woman. They said that she disgraced Ghana and I'm like, shoo, is she the one disgracing Ghana or your, never mind. If you think what she did was ridiculous, how can you not see that that's the same thing that your government is doing? The woman has been posting videos of some dilapidated schools in Ghana where children are learning under the tree. From afar, the Tion Primary School located in the Timpani district of the Upper East region does not even look like a school. But that's not the worst. Just when you get close to the school, this is the first thing you see. This is dehumanizing to say the least. You did not see that one, you want to build a cathedral. But you know, I really don't want to give my opinion about this. So the land that the president is donating is already developed. So that means that they will have to demolish some buildings. So they will demolish the scholarship secretariat, the judicial training institute, the passport office, and the residences of nine judges. Government has justified the decision to relocate some nine judges from their current official residence residents to make way for the construction of a national cathedral. Again, a lot of Ghanaians are totally against this. Government should locate another land because we have a lot of lands in Accra and outside Accra. You can acquire that one at a lesser cost than demolition and compensate them. Why don't the government find a place and build the cathedral over there than destroying those properties? Mm, the government has so many lands and can build elsewhere. But of course the government is making it known that this project will also be lucrative. Mm -hmm. They said that it will become a major tourist attraction. You know how what much I want to tell Ghanaians is that people are contributing, individuals are donating, and this thing is not all, only going to be a liability, but it's even going to be income generation. In fact, when the thing comes out and Ghanaians sees it, it is going to so cater for itself and even generate income for the nation. So it will make a lot of money for the government, which is why they want it right in the middle of Accra, so that as you are landing, you can go to the cathedral. Okay, so is this now to glorify God or to make money? I mean, I'm just a little bit confused. So like I said, I really don't want to give my opinion about this. I just would like to use this to address Nigerian officials. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever contest for any political office in Nigeria, please respect yourself and desist from making any vow to build a church, cathedral, or mosque. Please, we have more than enough in Nigeria. Maybe Ghanaians don't have enough churches. <laughs> I don't know. But we have one on every block. In fact, we have more than one in some buildings. But right now, we need our politicians to vow to fix our roads, to equip our hospitals, to give us stable electricity, to fix our education system. Students were on strike for months. Hey, low duty. We don't need any more churches in Nigeria. We just make a vow to stop embezzling our money. And God will be very happy. Having a big church is not a confirmation of godliness. And I'm very sure that when they build this cathedral in Ghana, it will become a major tourist attraction. 
no doubt about that it will be beautiful and it will make a lot of money for the government but does that mean that Ghanaians will not be closer to God because of the cathedral I don't know will that take care of the dilapidated schools I don't know will that benefit common people let me know <laughs> you know I've said this before that those who brought the gospel to Nigeria did not build big cathedrals they did not they built schools they built hospitals they built things that made life better for common people there are places in Nigeria till today where the only hospitals available were the ones built by missionaries let me know what you guys think about the president's vow and the fact that they want to spend 100 million dollars you guys don't know much guess what I'm just keeping it real so speaking of elections, there's a major protest going on right now in Algeria. More than 20,000 people are on the streets protesting because the president is trying to do fifth term by fire by force. Demanding change and defying a ban on protests in the capital Algiers. Most of these young people have only known one president, 81-year-old Abdulaziz Bouteflika. President Abdulaziz Bouteflika has been in power since 1999, that is 20 years ago. The man is 81 years old and he's been sick for a long time. In fact, he's on wheelchair. And do you know that since he had stroke in 2013, he's rarely seen in public. Only for him to announce on February 10th that he would run for another term in this uh, April presidential election. He has been in power for 20 years, but over the last six, he's rarely been seen in public. President Abdelaziz Bouteflika had a stroke in 2013. Despite being confined to a wheelchair, he says he will seek a fifth term in this April's election. Ah, uh -uh. the man was on wheelchair when he was sworn in for the fourth time. He could barely speak. He only gave a two-minute speech because he was very weak. Abdelaziz Bouteflika appeared to be weak. He did not smile, hardly look to the audience. He was seated on a wheelchair. Then he made a short, a short speech, a two minutes long speech. At the end of his speech, the president left the room, helped by the same doctor who had helped him the day of the election. I don't even know if he's the one that wants the fifth term or the people around him are the ones pushing for it because they are benefiting for it. I don't know because he doesn't look well enough to even say that he wants to run. For real, this is not funny. Now, you know, the sad thing is that when he had the stroke, they had to fly him to Geneva for treatment. How can you how can you be in power for so long and not equip all the hospitals where you can be treated it, it does I, I don't know it doesn't make sense to me These African leaders, they never cease to amaze me. So now the police in Algeria are shooting tear gas at protesters. They are arresting protesters. For what? For demanding that they deserve better haba. Honestly, African leaders need to understand that presidency is not their father's heritage. Let me know what you guys think about this story. You guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Senegal, they had their presidential election a day after the Nigerian election and incumbent president Macky Sall has been declared the president-elect. Congratulations, Mr. President. This will be his second term. The president is elected for a seven-year term in Senegal. Keep in mind that their election in Senegal was so peaceful. No incident was reported. Nobody was killed. That's a lesson for us in Nigeria to emulate. So once again, congratulations to the president. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Now moving on to Kenya, I'm sure that you guys have heard about this story, but you know, in October of 2017, two members of parliament in Kenya had the fight over the presidential election. You know, they beat up each other, but one of them slapped the other. <laughs> Anyway, a year after that, they were forced to apologize to each other during a National Assembly proceeding. And that was when this happened. I would like to say that, Mr. Speaker, on that particular day, I did not slap on a rebo jaguar. It is his cheeks that moved towards my hands. Ah! It was his cheek that moved towards. <laughs> on that particular day, I did not slap on a rebo jaguar. It is his cheeks that moved towards my hands. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, eventually he was forced to apologize. But let me know what you guys think about his first apology with the cheek moving towards him. You guys never know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. What's up? It's your girl Adiola. Welcome to Wave, the easy way of sending money home. You guys are seriously a few steps away from fast reliable and no fee money transfer. Now to complete setting up your WAVE account, grab your cell phone and open the WAVE app and then follow the instructions below.
Now don't forget to use my name as promo code Adiola if you want to get $5 extra when you sign up for the first time. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you do that. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.